I am Lisa Brene with DLCP Group. I'm the CEO. Um, I started the company in 2011, and the reason I started the company was because I wanted to give back to the community. I wanted to have a company where customers were valued and employees were appreciated and had a good quality life balance. So as a, as a woman in tech, there's not many women that are actually in the field and it's been very challenging with me over the years. Some of the challenges I faced, and it was very obvious, I went to an, an Amazon Web Service conference where there was 60,000 people, but there is only less than 2% were women. And it was very obvious then that we needed to make a change to make a difference for women. So some of the stories I wanted to share with you were about the challenges I faced as a minority woman-owned business. I've had to learn to speak up for myself and make sure that my voice is heard just as much as the men in the room. What, we did, what I did is one of my challenges is was with a partner. I, unfortunately, in tech, there's not many women. So I was talking to a partner about some of the changes. I did the research about pricing and how we need to look at the bigger picture in order to get more customers. They refused to listen to me because I was a woman. And even though I did all the research, compared everything, I had to get my VP, who is a male, to go in and argue on my behalf before they would listen. And then he said, oh, by the way, now that you're listening and willing to talk about price, that was all Lisa, and that's what she's been trying to tell you for the past two years. And finally, they realized after we sold the product at a discounted rate of how much better it is to, to not think about the gender, but more about the research and what's being presented to them. From there, I've also experienced bias with other partners. Um, I was at a networking event a couple years ago. I was there with a couple of male counterparts. We were especially invited to this event because we were VIP partners with them. And they, when we got there, they said, oh, you're not on the list. And I said, well, so-and-so invited us. They asked us to attend to talk to the president. They went and got the president, brought him over to us, and instead of acknowledging me, who was standing in front of the men, they looked past me and went and talked to the men and said, hi, I'm the president, my name is so-and-so. And I'm like, well, and my, my employee just looked at them and said, well, you need to talk to her. She's the president. She's the one that makes the decisions. Then they looked at me and said, oh, I'm so sorry. They gave me their card, but they, and then they said, let me introduce you to my team. The whole team came over, 10 people from around the world all came over and did the same exact thing. They looked at my male colleague and said, hey, hi, nice to meet you. And he kept saying over and over again. And that was the point when I decided to terminate the relationship. Because I, for me as a woman, I want to be treated equal. I make the decisions. I'm the one that's negotiating the contracts. I'm the one that's deciding on the technology we're developing. So then there was another challenge I faced. We have a state contract. And with this state contract, I have to meet with the governor, the CIO. I have to meet with a lot of executives. Unfortunately, a lot of them are men. They don't look at me as an equal. They actually think of me as I'm just the assistant. I'm just there to take notes. So when they actually, when they see me in the room, they look at me and go, oh, she's here to take notes. And, one, and there was one time we met with the governor of the state and the governor actually looked at my male counterparts and said, oh, nice to meet you. And assumed they were the president and vice president. And then they said, no, I'm sorry, you need to speak with Lisa. She knows the details of the contract. She can tell you what is allowed and prohibited with this contract. Even still, afterwards, it took, it's taken us two years for the male people at the state to actually want to talk to me because they're not looking at me as the same as, their, as my male counterparts who are the same level or below me. So over the years, I've noticed these challenges and I want to make a difference for other women. So since then, what I've done is I purposely have looked for strategic partners because we do stuff at the state level, the federal level, and we want to make sure that we're working with partners that respect us, respect everybody as a whole. Because a big part of my, my company is I built a culture where everybody's treated equally, everybody's treated with respect. 
we're very inclusive. And we purposely do this because I've seen what it's like to be out there, and I don't want anybody to ever feel like that. So what we've done is we've formed strategic partners with other female CEOs and other male-dominated um, industries that want to help women promote themselves. So I attended an event um, about a month ago in Bangkok, and it's for women executives from around the world. And it's a phenomenal event because you get to meet all these women that are doing great things in industries that you never would think. Like I met somebody that's doing solar. They're building solar plants out in other countries. Some other people are doing construction. And then others are actually developing nanotechnology that we're using today. And people are not thinking that women typically will do these things. But by building these partnerships, I've been meeting women from around the world, and we're working together on how to build a future for the next generation. So what's really helped me over the years is getting certifications. Even though it seems like it's, it's a pain in the butt, there's nothing you're actually getting of value, they really help because it, you find the companies that want to work with women or minorities and it helps you establish a foundation so then you can go and compete at a next level in order to make sure you're successful and able to do everything. We were very fortunate to get on a couple of contract vehicles just because of our status. And from there, we've actually been able to elevate our business and we're now we can compete. Before, we were able to do the work, but now that we have the references, more and more customers are taking us serious. So as I mentioned, I was at a global summit of women a couple about a month ago, but I I look for other women organizations to join. I'm a huge I work a large part with NABO, which is not National Women Business Associate that's based here in the US and they have chapters throughout the country and I actually every year sponsor 10 next gen scholarships to help women make a difference in in the community. And what, with these scholarships, it gives them the opportunity to get access to the platform, meet, attend the conferences, attend the local meetups, and get that exposure at an early age. Because I wish I knew about this when I started my business. It w makes a huge difference to have people to sit there and support you. And another organization that I'm hugely involved in is, is WIP, Women Impacting Policy. And with that, I'm on the leadership committee who's helping bring women together to make the policies for us at the federal level. I also volunteer quite often. Um, I am running the makerspace area over here, so please stop by if you have any questions. But what I also do is what I also do is I work with a lot with women on the side. I mentor women through HCC or through other avenues, and I work with them starting a business, what they need to know, how to, how to um, do the paperwork to even get, to get to register with the state, the federal level, to teach them the basics of accounting, help them to read a contract and understand it fully make sure they understand the best practices, who they should target, how, the, how to be successful without making as many mistakes as I did. Another thing that I'm very big on doing is teaching everybody to give back because it makes a big difference in, with everybody's life because if you volunteer, you're helping the next generation. So, oh, Dave. Okay, so this is my team, my Houston-based team. I do have employees around the world, and we purposely um, make sure we hire the best in class. We make sure that you want to be a part of a team, and you're willing to continuously learn and make a difference. And even a lot of my team that's here in the photograph are here this weekend volunteering because they are just as passionate as I am about making a difference in the community. So because of some of the things that we've done over the years, we've been recognized. One of the biggest recognitions I received within the past year was through Amazon Web Services. The, the former vice president of Worldwide Public Sector, Sandy Carter, gave us an award for Think Big for Small Business. We helped them develop a program tied for small businesses 
to make sure that they can compete at the same level as the top consulting firms. Because we were, cha we were challenged, we were one of the first partners with AWS. We helped prove that ERP applications could run on the cloud. We helped develop multiple programs with them. But we, were, we weren't at the same level as the big guys because we were a small company. I could never get the 100 certifications required to keep our status. Even though we had the most referenceable customers, we still couldn't get it. So she, she worked with us to develop a program to make sure that everybody is recognized and treated equally. Since then, they're now working on creating other programs to help businesses, once they get in, to make it to the next level. <laughs> OK. Well, thank you. Thank you for listening to me. We have two other great speakers. Please stay and listen to them as well. <laughs>